Hey everybody and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Appreciate you checking out out. Today we're going to dive into the interesting topic of loops and waveforms on the ventilator. So patients who are on mechanical ventilation on a ventilator, the machine gives you these different waveforms. Particularly today we're going to be talking about the pressure, flow, and volume waveforms, and then loops. Uh, is specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about flow volume loops and pressure volume loops. And it's gonna be kind of an introduction to those topics. We're gonna to talk about the shape of them, what each part of the shape means, what you can gain clinically from those things. So a video that's targeting more so those in medical training or in the medical profession, but obviously we encourage anyone interested, stick around, 60 second break for the introduction, but don't go anywhere, we'll see you right back. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments, even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting, so don't forget to check those out. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. So starting with waveforms, there's three basic waveforms that the ventilator gives us. There's the pressure time waveform. So pressure is the P. There is the flow time waveform. So flow is this V with the circle over it. And then there's the volume time waveform. All right, so these are the three main waveforms the ventilator gives us when looking at it or that we can find on the ventilator, pressure, flow, and volume. And they show us different things, all right? The first thing to notice and to know is that the waveforms will actually look different depending on if the patient is on volume control ventilation versus pressure control ventilation. And we'll go into how those differ um, in terms of the waveforms. But volume control ventilation, for those of you that don't know, essentially means you set a tidal volume. All right. So you set the tidal volume. And the pressure then is the variable that will change based on the tidal volume you set. Whereas pressure control is you set the pressure. And then the tidal volume is the variable that will change based on the pressure you set. So, you know, you're controlling the volume and volume control, and you're controlling the pressure in pressure control. But as such, the waveforms, pressure flow and volume waveforms, will look different. So what we have dr drawn down here are these waveforms if the patient is on volume control. So they're set to volume control. You cho chose a certain tidal volume to give them, say 450 cc's of tidal volume that is set so that they get that each breath. You'll set the respiratory rate, say 16, and then you'll set their PEEP, their um, end expiratory pressure, and we'll say you set their PEEP at 5. The other thing you set is their FiO2, their fraction of inspired oxygen, and we'll just say 50% for this case. Not many of these numbers are relevant for this discussion, except for the PEEP, and then just knowing that they're on volume control, and we'll get into why. So starting first, we have our pressure versus time waveform. And this is a single breath, right? So that's how you can think of this. This is a single breath that the ventilator has given the patient. So if we're thinking about this, it's how the pressure changes in the circuit, the ventilator circuit, with that breath. So the things we have are we have, let's see if we can draw, probably not. There's a patient, right, a stick figure patient. They're lying down. Here's their arms lying at their side. Here's their head. Here's their mouth, eyes. And they have an endotracheal tube in their mouth, right, hooked up to the ventilator machine, right? And the ventilator machine has our waveform stuff, but the ventilator is pumping volume into the endotracheal tube that then goes into their two lungs, and the pressure in this closed circuit, right, lungs, trachea, endotracheal tube, is what's being shown here. 
Notice that this is zero pressure, and the pressure waveform does not start at zero, and that is because of the PEEP. What you have set is a end expiratory pressure, end expiratory pressure, and that is the PEEP. The PEEP is where this pressure waveform starts because the PEEP is the pressure in this circuit all the time. Whether they're breathing in or breathing out, the PEEP is always there, and that's what the start of this pressure waveform is showing, the PEEP here. So you have your PEEP, and then the pressure starts to increase. This is when the breath is going in, right? So this is inspiration. And on the pressure waveform, you might see two different things. You might see this, which is just a smooth transition to increasing pressure. And if it looks like this, it means the ventilator gave the breath. The alternate option, which maybe will be a easier to understand is if there's a little dip here, a little decrease in pressure, this right here is suggestive that the patient took a breath, right? Because the patient contracted their diaphragms and created a slight negative inspiratory pressure. So the pressure dropped just for a second. And then the ventilator noticed this and then the ventilator gave them their volume controlled breath. And this is what the waveform will look like. It increases, increases, increases to a point. And this top pressure here is going to be known as the PIP or the peak inspiratory pressure, the highest pressure that is seen in the circuit when that volume is given. And the peak inspiratory pressure is usually a surrogate for kind of um, uh, airway resistance because it's the pressure that is seen in this circuit when they're pushing the breath in. So if you have a lot of bronchoconstriction or the ET tubes got a clog or there's a lot of mucus, there's more resistance when you push that breath in. So this PIP, this peak inspiratory pressure might be higher. Then what happens after you get to the kind of this maximal peak inspiratory pressure is the pressure in the circuit drops. And you won't always see this plateau here. I put this plateau here just to demonstrate that this would actually be known as the plateau pressure. But this is something that needs to be measured. You have to do a plateau pressure. And a plateau pressure is after the breath is pushed fully in, so picture the ventilator pushing that breath in, you then pause at that maximal amount of tidal volume. And the plateau pressure is this plateau that you'll see, which is representative primarily of the compliance of the lungs. Some other things contribute as well, such as how heavy the chest wall is and those types of things, which is out of the um, kind of indications of this video discussion, but this would be the plateau pressure. Note though, unless you're testing for the plateau pressure, you won't see this here, right? Essentially this waveform instead will just come so, like uh, smoothly down, it'll come to a peak and then start to come down, all right? You won't see this plateau that you would see if you were testing the plateau pressure as we drew out here. All right. So then the pressure decreases until you get back to not zero, but to that N expiratory pressure you set, which is PEEP. And we said a PEEP is five. So this right here would be a pressure of five millimeters of mercury. All right. And that is under volume control during a single breath. If it is under pressure control, Right, so we said this is in volume control. We're just going to draw right here quick. If it were pressure control, just the shape of the curve looks a little different because if there's a smooth pressure, so you're setting the pressure, it'll look more boxy, right? So it'll look like that, although I apparently am a little slanted. That was unintentional. Um, but it'll just go straight up like this and come down. And this is, would be under pressure control setting. So again, you still have your PEEP here. The peak inspiratory pressure, the PIP that we talked about up here, is going to be the pressure that you set for pressure control, which will correlate to here. If I set their pressure control for, I don't know, choose whatever you want, 20, this PIP will be 20. And that is what I set on the ventilator because I'm controlling the pressure. It doesn't go higher than I set it. Set it and then it will smoothly come back down. So that's what it would look like under pressure control. It'd be much boxier. All right. In a future video, we're going to talk about how 
these morphologies change with different kind of pathophysiologic responses, whether it be flow hunger or breath stacking or ineffective triggering or flow starvation. So look for a future video on that. This is just the introduction. Next waveform we have is flow. That's what this V with the circle over it, it's flow. So this is flow uh, by time. It's a flow time waveform. Again, under volume control. So what we see here is a box. So you start at zero, right? You start at zero flow. It's not like pressure where there's a peep already set. There's no flow baseline. And then what you get is you get inspiration. That's what is on top here. You get inspiration. I guess I'll just write inspiration here. And that's that flow shooting way up to help the patient inspire. It's flowing in that volume that you set. All right. And this here, understandably so, is the peak flow. And the peak flow is actually a sur not a surrogate, but a result of your inspiratory time, your inspiratory time, also known as your eye time. This makes sense, right? Because what I said on the ventilator is a volume. I said each breath, I want them to get about 400 cc's. So how much flow there needs to be to give them 400 cc's depends on how fast I set that breath to go in, right? If I set that breath to go in over one second, it would have to flow that volume in differently than if I set that breath to go in over two seconds because it have it would have twice the time to push in that 400 cc's of volume. So the peak flow here is related to the eye time, the inspiratory time, which is something you set on the ventilator, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. This bottom part here is expiration, right? So negative flow, they're expiring back at the ventilator. And it should always return to zero here, right? It starts at zero and it returns to zero. Again, we're going to go into abnormalities at another time, but something you sometimes see is if this does not go back to zero, we're just going to erase that. We'll put the line back in, but let's just say it doesn't go back to zero and then it starts another inspiratory breath. See how you're not at zero yet? This can sometimes be suggestive of things like air trapping. Again, look for that video. We're going to be putting it out hopefully in the next week or so on how these waveforms change depending on different possible pathologies going on. So this is in volume control. We'll draw again. If it were to be pressure control, the waveform looks a little bit different. All right, you get this increase as we did, but instead of that boxiness, you get a decrease that's slanted and then your expiratory breath. So instead of this box for pressure control, you get more of a triangle shape um, rather than that box shape, which is just related to how the flow will work in pressure control versus volume control. All right, last but not least for the waveforms is volume versus time waveform. And this waveform looks pretty obvious, right? The volume will increase during inspiration. So this left side is inspiration and then the volume decreases during expiration. So that's pretty straightforward, right? In the future video, when we talk about different things that could go wrong, we'll talk about things like, um, again, air trapping volume goes up in inspiration, but doesn't return to zero in expiration or things like breath stacking volume goes up, comes down, but then they take another breath really quickly. Some of those types of things. So this is the introduction to the waveforms in volume control with some shout outs to the pressure control changes, different parts of the waveform, what they mean, and future video, which we'll end up putting in this video's description once it comes out, we'll go into the uh, pathology that can happen and then clinically what you should change. Now let's talk about loops. We have two main loops we're going to talk about. The first is the pressure volume loop, pressure on the X axis, volume on the Y axis. And this is what a pressure volume loop tends to look like on the ventilator. It does not start at a pressure of zero, right? But it does start at a volume of zero. The pressure it starts at, again, is going to be the PEEP. Because there's pressure in that circuit all the time, no matter what. And then what we have here is if we were to split this down the middle, we have the inspiratory limb. So you're inspiring here. And then the expiratory limb, you're expiring here, which makes sense, hopefully. 
The different parts of this loop, things that they talk about that are important to know are the inflection points. So if we were to draw this and just make it maybe a touch more obvious, the inflection point, what we would draw is something like this very kind of flat out and then an abrupt change where it starts to go up. And this would be the lower inflection point, L-I-P, lower inflection point. And what we can see happening here is the pressure is increasing with very little volume increase up until this point, right? And the thought with the lower inflection points are this is where compliance changes. So this lower inflection point is the pressure it requires to open up the alveoli. And in a perfect world, the lower inflection point would be equivalent to the peep you have set because you don't want these alveoli, right? The alveoli are kind of these grape structures where air exchange happens. You don't want them to collapse and then have to be opened and then they collapse and opened and then they collapsed because that can cause something called atelectotrauma, which is bad for the lungs and we don't want atelectotrauma. But this lower inflection point is when the pressure has to ramp up before the volume starts to change. And again, in a perfect world, it would be kind of equivalent to your PEEP because that is where the alve alveoli are kind of perfectly distended, not over distended, not under distended. The lower inflection point is the pressure where the um, kind of PEEP is just right for those alveoli to stay open. Then there's an upper inflection point. And the upper inflection point is where the curve of this waveform starts to change. And the upper inflection point would be when there's, let's, well, again, make it more obvious. Um, so excuse us. It's not going to connect, but that's okay. So the upper inflection point could look like this. It is where, again, the pressure starts to increase a lot and the volume does not increase. And this is known as the upper inflection point. And this is when the alveol alveoli start to get over distended, meaning they are too open. Alveoli are a bunch of grapes. You can get alveoli that are under distended and that can cause atelectotrauma as we talked about. You can get alveoli that are kind of porges just right. Or you can get alveoli that are over distended. Right, they're way dilated, they're very over distended. And the upper inflection point tells you the pressure when they're over distended, right? Because the pressure starts to increase a ton, right, this way, with very little increase in the volume that is given. And if it gets bad, they call it a bird's beak. And you don't want the bird's beak, it means that your pressures or your volume are set too high because you're starting to get over distension of the alveoli. So what you want it to look like is similar to how I drew it the first time, if I can replicate that drawing, let's see, which is where you don't really have much of an inflection point and it goes back down into expiration. All right, if, and again, we're gonna get into this more in that future video about the pathology, but let's just draw this here. If you start to get loops that look like they're lying flatter, sometimes that means that there's a decrease in compliance, right? Because there needs to be bigger pressure changes, P on the x-axis, with smaller volume changes. Whereas contrarily, if you get loops that are sitting upright more, again, those are smaller pressure changes with larger volume changes. So that could be improvement in compliance. All right, so when it lies flat like that, this is actually better compliance, positive compliance, better compliance. And this is worse, or actually it's in green, but you get what I mean, worse compliance. And we'll talk more about that in the future video. The last loop we're gonna talk about is here. It's the flow volume loop. Let me uh, erase some of this just because it gets in the way. No, I erased the F for flow. So the other one over here is the flow volume loop. All right, and the flow volume loop, I don't look at it as much, maybe I should, I guess I'm guilty of that. But the flow volume loop here is inspiration on the top positive flow, expiration on the bottom. And you want it to have this nice, smooth contour. There's not much to say about this loop until we talk about pathology, but a few things that you might notice with the flow volume loop would be something like sawtooth pattern, all right, or the scoop pattern, 
which is kind of scooped. And these mean different things, whether it's obstruction or mucus or what have you. And again, look for that future video for that. But the flow volume loop, you want it to follow this nice inspiratory, expiratory um, contour um, on the ventilator when you look at that loop. Hope that was helpful. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Again, we're going to be kicking out that other video on the uh, pathology that can change these waveforms and then clinically what to consider. Um, we do want to just show you on our Whiteboard Doctor homepage. This is the Whiteboard Doctor homepage. We have done a bunch of COVID content, but we also love our general medical education content as well. So we got a bunch of playlists down here, critical care, pulmonology, endocrine, blah, 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 blah. So definitely check out those playlists. Check out the other videos. We'll link some in the video description. We hope that the video is helpful. If so, subscribe, hit that like button, all that good stuff. We appreciate you all. Stay well, keep learning, and we'll see you next time.